Sid Hatfield grew up in Blackberry, Kentucky. He was one of Jacob and Rebecca Hatfield's nine surviving of 12 children. He was nicknamed Smiling Sid because of his distinctive grin showing gold cap teeth. Despite his boyish appearance, he was not very tall. He was small and thin, but he had a tough reputation. However, in 1919, when the mining community of Maitland came under threat from the Baldwin Feltz Agency, the mayor, Cabell Testerman, appointed him police chief. Sid was an effective lawman. He kept order in the mining town, and he stood up to the local coal companies and the Baldwin, the Baldwin Feltz agents as the miners fought for their right to organize. The Baldwin Feltz agency offered him substantial bribes if he would permit them to station in the town. He refused. On May 19, 1920, him and his friend Mayor Testerman resisted the Baldwin Feltz agents' forcible evictions of unionized miners. In the gun battle known as the Battle of Maitland or the Maitland Massacre, seven of the 13 Baldwin Feltz men were killed, including Albert and Lee Feltz, brothers of the agency's head. Two miners were killed and Cabell Testerman, the mayor, was mortally wounded, apparently by Albert Feltz. Several more men on both sides were wounded. After Mayor Testerman died, Sid married Testerman's widow, Jessie, only a couple weeks after her first husband's death. People claim that Sid Hatfield had actually killed Mayor Testerman in order to marry Jessie, but according to Jessie, the mayor had asked Sid to look after her and her young son if anything were to happen to him, given the dangers that he knew he faced. The trial over the Maitland gunfight took place in spring of 1921 with the acquittal of Hatfield and the miners. Hatfield was filmed playing himself and Smiling Sid in 1920, a short film reenactment of the battle made by and for the United Mine Workers of America. He became a local celebrity, the miner's hero, but he knew himself to be a marked man. As the struggle continued, the new local authorities in Maitland were less supportive of the Union. Martial law was declared in the summer of 1921. Hatfield then lost his post as chief in Maitland, but he was elected as constable of the Magnolia District. One day, he was unarmed and accompanied by Jesse when he arrived in Welch, West Virginia on August 1, 1921. 21 for the trial of his alleged involvement and other mining related disturbances. His friend and deputy Edward Chambers and his wife Sally were with him too, as Ed was also charged. As they began to climb the steps of the courthouse, the two young men were gunned down by Baldwin Feltz agents, including Charlie Lively. Sid Hatfield died almost instantly from three or four chest wounds. Lively then finished off Ed Chambers with a shot to the head despite his wife's screams to please don't. Although the killers were charged, none were ever convicted of the murders. And for the second time in 14 months, Jesse was again a widow. Sid Hatfield and Ed Chambers were buried as heroes. Outrage at their murder fueled the miners' uprising and eventually came to a head in the Battle of Blair Mountain. Hey guys, so today I just wanted to um, clear something up. I keep getting, we keep getting asked repeatedly a question and, uh, you know, as they say, a picture's worth a thousand words, I think a video would be worth more. So I'll just show you guys. Um, this is about Sid Hatfield, who was participant in the Maitland Massacre in West Virginia, not far from where we are, actually. Um, and so I guess there's a video or something out there or rumor that he was not an actual Hatfield. First of all, it's wild to me that anyone would think that Sid Hatfield being born where he was, raised where he was, in the time period he was, would not be related to the infamous Hatfields. Um, it's crazy. It really is. Well, where did he come from? Did he just like morph from outer space? You know, a Hatfield drop, dropped in the middle of a uh, feud country, but he's, he's not a Hatfield? You know, like, how would that happen? But anyways, so here he is. His name's William Sidney Hatfield. Uh, he was born in Blackberry Creek, Kentucky. And he was married to Jesse Lee Maynard, correct? So his dad was Jacob Hatfield. And Jacob's dad was Jeremiah, a.k.a. Jerry Hatfield, who is the son of Ephraim Hatfield and Annie McKinney. 
um, Hatfield, and Ephraim is Devil Anch's great grandfather, and Annie is actually Leo's fifth grandmother, so that would make him related to Sid, you know, so there you go. Um, Rachel Vance, who would be Sid's great grandmother, so we got a Vance and a Hatfield again over here. Um, some of the confusion comes from Ephraim Hatfield, who they called Ethabal, because he is the one that came from Virginia initially. He is the Hatfield that is the beginning of all the Hatfields in West Virginia. They all go back to him, hence the name Ethabal. But he had two wives. He had Mary, who died uh, fairly young. I'm not going to say an age, because, you know, I don't want another channel to make a 20-minute video on me saying the wrong age. Um, some will get that, some won't. Either way, moving on. Annie was his second wife. They had some children that made up, you know, this line, basically. And then Ephibol and Mary had um, Devil Ants' father and his brothers, basically. But they were, you know, they're all related. They all come back to big, you know, if of all, they all came out of him. So, either way, here it is. Sid Hatfield is a Hatfield. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show everybody. So, you guys have a, a great day, and we will see you next time.